Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to show you a little trick that I just learned for um, removing and adding wires onto the ECM plug for my uh, GM Ecotech ECM, which is an E67 ECM. So if you look right now, you'll see my fuel level says 0%. That's because when I was modifying the wiring harness for this engine swap when I swapped the Ecotech in here and I had my pinouts apparently I thought that I was never going to use that or for whatever reason I cut the wire really really short and I discovered that in a video I did a little while back hopefully I'll put a link to that up here and this starts at 43 Ah, oh, crap damn it alright so I see plug 44 right here and it's cut and I was really irritated when I realized that I cut it because now that I got this digital dash I really wanted to use the uh, fuel sending unit that's on the factory fuel pump sending unit that I installed on there but when I realized that that wire was cut I couldn't but since then I've been doing some research on these plugs and whatnot and I figured out or I learned how you can actually change those. So let's go back there and add that wire. Actually, I'm gonna pull the one that I cut out of there and I'm going to um, add the new wire which goes all the way to the sending unit. So here's my ECM. This is the plug, the smaller plug that I need to get into. I've got my pinouts. This is the pinout for the, um, the year vehicle that I took this engine out of. And what I'm looking for is the fuel level sensor signal. And that's a purple wire and it's on pin 44. So that's what I need to get to. Okay, so this is the plug I need to get to. Um, first thing I'm going to do is pop up that little red piece. And then I just depress this down, pull the handle forward. It kind of pulls the plug up. And then at that point, it literally just comes straight up. So, now I need to um, remove this cover and there's just some little tiny tabs on the back here that you pop off then that comes off and then like I showed you uh, let's cut this now I know that I'm looking for wire 44 and there's a little number there telling me that this row starts at 43 and I can see the little tiny portion of the um, wire that's in there. Man I really cut that flush. I hope I can grab a hold of that. Anyways, the first thing that we need to do is take this blue piece and just pop it up. I'm gonna grab a real small screwdriver to do that. So if you look you'll see that this cap right now is essentially flush with the uh, the end of the connector here. I'm going to put a screwdriver in here and just pry this out a little bit. Just go a little bit on each side. And you'll feel when it loosens up. And you can see now it's not flush, it's like five millimeters sticking up. When you do that, you put this into like a, a terminal release mode. And then I found this tool, which is actually made by Molex, which is the company that makes these, these connectors. And it's designed for removing these wires. And if you look, you see these little tiny holes. When you have this plate popped up and you push that into the holes, it pushes this up against the little release tabs that allows you to pull the wires out. So I'm going to find that one, which is going to be the second hole up on this side. Slide it in there and then lightly push. It doesn't take much, but you can feel it when it clicks in there. Now I've got to see if I can grab a hold of that. Okay, I got it. 
Man. So I almost really screwed myself by that I had cut it like I cut these so flush I could barely grab a hold of it. But luckily, there were no wires next to it, so I was able to kind of whittle the hole out a little bit larger. I'm not proud of that, but I had to do what I had to do. So now this this is a wire that I've already run to the sending unit, so that's what I need to get in there. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's nice and tight. Now, theoretically, get this lined up properly. That should go right in there. Oh, much better. Much better. Okay. It went all the way in. I felt it click. And then you can wiggle it a little bit and you can feel it kind of pushing back on the surface that it like seats in. So now I'm going to pull it back there. Get a little zip tie so I can clip these in. Now you take this and just click it in. Now you can see once again, it's flush with the surface. That means it's ready to go. Take my protective cover. Snap that on. Now you just need to line this up, push it back on, and then push the handle down. like that you hear that click in then you push that down I don't know why these aren't pushed down now I just need to splice this into this and then we'll go back around and uh, see if hopefully it registers on the dash so this is going to be the first time I activate the dash and we'll see if the fuel sending unit is now working sweet look at that 70 percent that is awesome that is so cool i'm so excited that that's working i'm assuming 100 percent is full so that is so cool the the coolest part about that is that you know a month or two ago when i discovered that i had cut that wire i kind of just got thought i was screwed because at that point taking apart those plugs and getting the terminals out just seemed like an impossible task. I had done some Google searching trying to find out how to do it and I showed some people like prying them apart and I'm I was just like that's crazy I'm not doing that and then as I've been gathering information to try and redo that wiring harness I came upon this uh, little like manual on how to assemble and disassemble those those connectors and then it gave me a part number for that little removal tool so I picked that up and lo and behold it's 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 pretty easy to do so that's that's really cool, really exciting. That's uh, at least a really helpful piece of information for me. I hopefully hopefully it helps some of you guys out. If you've watched some of my other videos, you know that I'm in the process of trying to redo that wiring harness. So what I'm going to do is in the description of this video, I'll put the part number and where I bought that little tool. I'll have a spreadsheet with the uh, the terminals and the plugs and everything for my entire wiring harness when I do a video of me actually doing the entire wiring harness. This was just a little bonus that I wanted to show you guys because I was super excited that I figured out how to do that. When I gather the rest of the information, which I don't have yet, I'll put up a video and I'll share that with all of you guys. In the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed this little tip. Hope you enjoyed going with me and fixing this, getting it working, which is super exciting. And hopefully it's helping you with your projects and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.